Good evening. How's everybody doing? It's Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. It's Friday night. And as always, we're here to paint. We're here to talk. Whatever comes up, right? So as you guys pop in, I'm sure hoping to hear you and see you, not hear you, but see you. You say hi and uh, grab a friend or two, let them know we're on. But uh, tonight we're going to work on this, I'd call it Duncan Fife, but really it's kind of a bowed front buffet. Hi. So tonight uh, I'm on a, on a mission to get this piece ready. I really do want you guys to kind of follow me on this journey on this piece because I'm excited to see it come together. I am always excited, but I think it's a really beautiful um, piece and I did some sanding and repair and then I bossed, cleaned it with white lightning and then bossed it. And the next thing I, I also stained, sorry, I sanded the top with anticipation of staining it, probably with my latest go-to voodoo gel stain, but we'll see. One of the things I'm going to be doing in this piece, I haven't quite decided yet. Uh, I may be doing some palette knife. What I mean by that, some scraping of paint. Uh, it might feel a little bit like it's distressing and that's okay. And just like that, we are almost done. Not super, super perfect coat. It's smooth, but it's not totally 100% covered. And that's okay because we have more to come. Last night on my Bowtie Treasures Facebook page, uh, I painted the piece uh, burlap. I wanted a nice warm color that would give us a good base for this project. I mentioned in the comment or the description of this live that we were trying to age this piece. So it's, in order to do that, it takes several layers of different techniques to do that. So I want to, uh, I'm going to be doing that. And then I used vintage duck egg. This is what I applied earlier today. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you, I used stormy seas to add some aging, some shading. And then later on, we're going to use, I'm going to try some Moonshine Metallics, add a little bit of pop of metallic on there. Uh, and also I'm going to show you how I use sea glass. So we've got a few colors going on, uh, on, on this piece. Brush wise, I'll try and introduce the brushes as we go through them. Again, Dixie Bell's brushes are pretty versatile, so you can swap those out pretty easily. So yeah, let's get going. All right. So first, as you can see on the far right of this piece it is in burlap and so this is where I left off last night and we're going to kind of work our way that way so I've got different stages planned so that we can understand all the process so in order for us to get this piece back up all caught up together we need to bring out the vintage duck egg and get that going so I've got a Dixie Bell mini brush right now and I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on there. I like to have a Mr. Bottle handy 
And so I'm going to keep that nearby just because um, it helps kind of move the paint, but I'll only use it if needed. Well, I want that burlap to show through. So I am not misting my bottle, the brush. I'm almost, uh, dry brush may be the wrong word, but I really am just roughly applying this, purposely letting burlap shine through. And this was the, and I'm working quickly just because we have a lot to do. You don't have to work as fast as I am. Uh, I did on my earlier coats, I did apply the paint vertically, meaning I'm not going side to side. Sometimes I'll cross hatch and just vary the pattern. I'm not doing that on this piece. I don't, on this phase, I don't overload my brush too much because if you put too much paint on your brush, you won't have that varying thickness. So once in a while, it's quite all right to let that undercoat show through. If all I was doing was painting this piece vintage duck egg, then I would want to take care to, to put enough paint on my brush that I could have this piece painted in two coats. I'm only doing one coat of vintage duck egg. I only did one coat of burlap. I did thin the burlap out a little bit, meaning I used a Mr. Bottle because I was trying to cover it, mostly cover up the boss. It wouldn't be the first time that I left some boss peeking through on a project, but I did let the burlap cover pretty good. But I don't want, I do not want the vintage duck egg to cover perfectly. On camera, you might see that this, these three drawers have a little bit of a lighter middle. And this drawer is flat. Do you see that? And the reason for that is because I put sea glass as a little bit of a highlight. These are bow front drawers. So I want to show you how I put that on there. There are so many ways to do this. I'm telling you now that um, I am I'm not demonstrating a shading technique. I mean a blending technique. This is what I would consider to be shading because I'm not mixing two colors together. Sea glass was applied here, no sea glass there. I need my Mr. Bottle, and I'm actually gonna sit on the floor just because it's low, all right? So in order to, to do this, I'm going to mist. Now, if I were earlier when I was doing this, I had you wanna protect the previous work from the Mr. Bottle, but this is all dry. So let me just warn you that if you are misting water, and you, it could mess up other paint. So just be careful. For this, you don't need a lot of paint. Let me see if I can show you. So just a little bit of paint, okay? Not much at all. And all I wanna do on this is just get some paint on there. And the reason why I don't want a lot is because I wanna fade it out and I don't wanna cover up all the work I did. So see how it's kind of nice and light? And then I'm gonna use uh, our beautiful Bestang brush, and I'm just gonna swirl that in. Gotta make sure it's, it's, it's wet. You can mist your brush if you have to. But I'm just swirling this around, so I'm kind of creating this fluffy highlight. And you sh your goal here is to watch the chalk paint disappear, or the edges disappear, so it's a nice, soft. And the, and the camera may be showing it a little lighter here. I think it's just picking up a reflection, but straight on, it's gonna look really good. But as best as you need to. If you, I wouldn't do too much, don't overwork it. But that's the beauty of a nice brush like this so that you can blend that in there. On camera, and when this is all done, there's just a subtle, soft 
You could go really dramatic, like I could do buttercream or white cotton, but I want it to be very subtle. And that's the only place that I'm putting that highlight. You should be able to see on this panel, this vignetting shading happening, and here there's none. That is what I did this, I did this part this morning. I have already done the left side and it's a little harder to, to bring, bring that around. So let's focus on the front and take a look at how to accomplish this look. Okay, that's, this is where some of the aging elements could come in. I'm using Stormy Seas here, but you can use, uh, I thought about using chocolate or coffee bean if you want more of a brown tone. And I'm only doing it here. I did some up at the top. So we're, we're gonna be somewhat selective on that process, okay? All right, two tools that I would recommend on this step. One would be, uh, this is the French tip. I really like this brush one because it's natural and it has a little bit point and it's small. And then I would just get a craft brush, something that you can put in a little bit of paint. I've demonstrated this several times and I think uh, if you've watched me enough, you've seen me shade, but I'm trying to put a bunch of different techniques all together into one piece and really is gonna make this, um, this project make a big difference. It was. The key to this technique and this type of work is keep it wet. You don't want it to dry because once it's dry, the paint won't move. Don't over mist it because every time you mist, that mist will get on your previous work. So you see how I shaded over here? This side has no shading, okay? And we're just gonna work. You can decide if you wanna put shading here, but remember, we put a little sea glass here. So do we really wanna shade all the way around? You could, you might just do a little bit of a, notice my brush is narrower than it is wide. So that's the nice thing about this type of brush. It's, a, it's called a flat. It allows you to really pinpoint where you wanna put that. So I don't want this to be really thick. Not a lot of water. And see how that French tip really just softens that edge. Almost, uh, it makes it not invisible, but there's no, let me bring you in really close. I want you to see the transition of this step. So when I apply it, I'm just getting it on there. As you noticed, probably I, I did mist it. You wanna, it helps to put it on a wet area. And see how I kind of do a little U shape, a little quick mist again. And the reason why this brush works is because it has a tapered feathered edge. So it allows me to kind of wisp it around and make that edge that the previous brush did disappear. If you can add this technique to your arsenal, you're gonna really be able to shade. I'm looking for my back. You can really shade in whatever color you want on whatever piece. I am wiping off the hot, the, this, this edge because I have plans for that to not be, I don't want this edge to be dark. Okay, so if we step back out, you can see how the shading really brings out the panel and this, I'm not saying you couldn't stop this way. I'm, the, the focus of this live is, is how to age. And so these are just some techniques that I like to use. And right now I'm using Stormy Seas over Vintage Duck Egg. As far as how far to take it on the larger drawers, just kind of use the same principle as above. Just a little U-shape. Um, I like to, by the way, I like to work in smaller sections because it's really hard to keep an entire drawer front misted and wet. 
So I'll just do one section at a time. And keep in mind too, in my experience, the colors tend to dry a little darker. So if, you, if you're not sure, you might wanna just do one drawer and then let it dry and see before you do all of the drawers and have regret, if you know what I mean? Like, oh, I can't believe I, worst case scenario, just put another coat of burlap and start over, right? Nobody wants to do that. So you might do a little test. Wisp it around, smooth it out, just like that. Okay, I think let's do, I'm not gonna do the far right panel. Let's do one more panel, let me see. Okay, we're doing good. One panel and then I think we'll, we'll switch to a different technique because I think we'll have covered this one pretty good. has it, the bottom doesn't. I'm gonna show you a little bit around. Um, what I do around the feet too in just a minute. I think that would be good. So try and do some of the heavy lifting with this craft brush. If you go to my website, bowtietreasures.com, there's a shop link and in there, there's an Amazon link. I believe I have the craft brushes in that Amazon link. If you'd like to see that set that I use, it's, um, it's a nice reliable set. I like it. So for contrast, left side is done, right side is not. And I let me show you what I'm going to do here. On the inside, I'd like to downplay the inside area, and I'm going to also kind of grunge up. Grunge is not the right word, but you can call it grunging if you want. See how I'm just kind of putting it around the bottom of the feet? And then I'm just going to get it wet just a little bit more. I just want the piece not to look brand new, right? Just want to give it a little bit of age to it, a little character, almost it's going to feel like it just didn't get cleaned good and that gives it some other places to put this style might be down in the corners. We'll just blend this up and around, wisp it. Uh, Moonshine Metallic is a water-based uh, potent metallic paint. It is a little thinner than let's, it's definitely thinner than using like, uh, you know, your gilding waxes and things like that. So I, I wouldn't necessarily, I, I'm not gonna ever paint a whole piece with it, but you can. I'm gonna use it as uh, part of our aging process to give it just a little bit of classy depth. Now you can get these scrapers on Dixie Bell's website or should, but something like this would be work well. I'm not going to use it, but I even thought I could use the, uh, this is from the silk screen stencils. If you've got one of those, it's plastic. Um, if you want to create a scrape, you use what you have. You can use a brush but I'm gonna use the scraper. This is an older container, so the paint might be a little thicker. But what I wanna do here is I want to keep the aged and old world feel. So I don't wanna use a brush, I don't wanna use, maybe you could use your finger, but I wanna be able to scrape. So that's why I got a scraper. And this is where I want to just see if I can create a nice, just, aged so it's almost like faux distressing but you're using gold digger 
So you see how I just, I'm just flattening parallel with the piece and I'm just hit and miss. So there's not much on my knife, but there's enough for me just to kind of hit this. I did a dresser a few months ago where I scraped inside, but to me, scraping inside the panel, I kind of felt like ruins the shading. Why did I shade if I'm gonna scrape gold in there? If you wanted to scrape in here, I would have scraped and then shaded. But this right here serves multiple purposes. One, it creates a warm glow and it's just really cool. The hardware will polish up beautifully and all work together quite well. You can use any moonshine metallic color you want. I just thought um, when I started designing the concept of this piece, I chose burlap with the idea that it would work really well with a gold. And I wanted it to be, I wanted that burlap really to shine through. So this is, for me, this is the last step. You can do this with gilding wax or probably gemstone mousse. I do recommend that when you do the gemstone mousse that you mix it with a little bit of top coat so it holds up. But again, if you use a gilding wax or mousse, um, yeah, I would put a little top coat in your gemstone mousse. One, it'll hold up really well to a top coat. And two, if you put it after top coat, it'll hold up uh, long term wise. So you may not be able to see that really well and that's purposeful, but I don't want this to be taking over. Some people don't like metallics. So I'm kind of going with the idea that, you know, for the person who doesn't think they like metallics, I think they'll like the subtle touches that I put on here just enough. And put some on the edge as much or as little as you want and where you want your piece. I didn't put some on the hardware a little bit. Just, so this is what I would consider faux distressing, but I'm faux distressing with gold. And the light's gonna hit this just right and come out looking smashing great. Okay, so that's really the uh, that's really the steps that I wanted to show tonight. Let me see if I can bring you in just a little bit. So you can see all the, you can see the, um, this one probably doesn't show as much. Here's where you can see the burlap coming through the paint. So I didn't totally cover it up. There's the shading. There's the moonshine metallic happening down the side. It's very subtle, but I think this is going to really come together to be a nice aged classy piece with a little bit of character. That's what you want, right? It is not just your average. If you, that's what you like, here's some more of the gold popping on the corner. And I think that, that that's really what uh, I think looks cool and it's fun to do. Well, I try to make this nice and compact for you so you can get all the different steps into one live. And I think we've done that. If you have any questions that you just think of as you uh, watch this or you're catching on replay, definitely put those in the comments. Uh, hopefully I was clear and you, you got some good tips and helps on that. I'm gonna go clean my brushes and uh, it'll take me a couple days to kind of get this thing done and, and looking great but I'm excited to share it with you. I think we're done, that was a little short tonight, but uh, I've tried to pack in a lot of good stuff. Hopefully that was helpful to you, inspiring, maybe colors, maybe techniques. Uh, feel free to share it with a friend or throw it their way. And uh, until next time, this is Aaron. Have a good night, stay creative, do something fun, stay in touch. See y'all later.
That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.